Hello. Hello. I feel like it's been a while since we jumped headfirst into a big project, don't you? I'm feeling a top today. Let's make a top. Hi, and welcome back to another crafting vlog on my channel. I think it's been about a year, half a year, since I first saw this top, this top, in H&M. Um, and it has been on my mental list of things that I want to make at some point since. It is so cute. Look at it. It's so cute. I love this so much. I don't know what it is. I just love it and I really, really want it. So, I'm making it. And I'm going to bring you along for the ride so you can make your own as well if you want to. So yeah, that's, that's fun. Let's do that. Let's, let's make a jumper together. I guess you can call this like a loose guide on how to make it because knitting and knitting garments, it's not hard. It's uh, once you wrap your head around it, it's easy and you can basically make anything. But it's making a tutorial is not as straightforward as making, say, a granny square cardigan because that's a bunch of squares that you piece together to make any size anything. This requires a lot more mathematics. <laughs> so, but I will do my best to make this understandable and easy to follow because this is fun and I would like for all of you to be able to enjoy the fun and enjoy this jumper if you want to because I think it's so adorable and I don't think H&M should gatekeep the, the cute adorable jumper. But anyway, let's discuss the project a little. Here's the top again and it is like i said adorable but there are several things i personally don't really like about it first of all easy it's fast fashion it's from h&m it was pretty expensive for what it is and what it is is a acrylic jumper that will probably pill very quickly and also fall apart at some point and yeah i i don't i don't want that and also the cut. Secondly, the cut. I don't really enjoy the cut. And um, that is a problem when, when it's something that you want to wear. You want to enjoy what you're wearing, right? So I like oversized jumpers. I like oversized jumpers a lot. And this is not oversized, obviously. Uh, I will keep it cropped, but I don't enjoy the slimmer sleeves. I want baggy, big cozy sleeves that I can pull over my hands. I'm going to make it roomier. Another detail I don't enjoy at all is the half turtleneck. I do not like wearing turtleneck things. It's restrictive and it's just a lot of fabric around here. I often feel like I'm being choked and not in a very nice way. Uh, so <laughs> I, don't, I don't like that. I will not be knitting it with half turtleneck. So what I am going to do is this is this is my one of my very favorite sweaters it is roomy it's got baggy sleeves it's big everywhere and it's it's it does have a pony on it which which makes it even better honestly the poniness of this helps but this is my favorite cut on a sweater jumper thing so i enjoy this and i'm going to just yoink all of the measurements except for the length from this one and apply it to the striper one. So to make that happen we will need to do some maths and so I am going to send you off to your first lesson of the day. I mean I'm going to send you off to voiceover shy and have her take you through how to calculate your measurements and your jumper and your stitches and all of that so you can make your own one and also I can make mine. So yeah, I will send you off to watch the rest of the vlog and I will talk to you again after. Let's go. Okay, so first we have to start by making a gauge swatch. And I know, I know, I know, swatches are super boring, but let me tell you why they matter and why they will unlock the ability to make almost anything. If you don't know how to knit yet, I will also go through how to cast on, how to do the knit stitch or stockinette stitch, how to do the purl stitch and also how to bind off. So if you already know all there is to know about knitting and gauge swatches, feel free to skip ahead to the next chapter in the video. A swatch is important to make 
because it will tell you what dimensions your finished piece will be and also how many stitches we need to cast on to reach those dimensions. Essentially, we want to see how many stitches fit into a 10 by 10 centimeter square or four by four inches if you use inches. I work in centimeters, so from now on, we will do the example in centimeters, but it's totally applicable to inches as well. Once we know how many stitches fit into 10 by 10 centimeters, and this is why we knit the swatch to begin with, we knit a square, uh, and I will show you how. Uh, <laughs> we knit a square or a rectangle uh, bigger than 10 by 10 to then pick out how many stitches in the 10 by 10 square we get. Once we know how many stitches fit into the 10 by 10 centimeter square, we can easily calculate how many stitches we get per centimeter by dividing the amount of stitches over 10 centimeters. So in my example, I get 18 stitches. So uh, we divide those 18 stitches by 10 and that gives us 1.8. So this means we have 1.8 stitches per centimeter and this <laughs> Stay with me. I know it's a lot of numbers and I don't like maths either, but this is this is very good to know. If I want my panel, my front panel, to be 56 centimeters wide, I then do 56 centimeters times 1.8, which is how many stitches I get per centimeter, to know how many stitches to cast on to get the width I want. I will write all of this down for you. <laughs> as well in the description because this is a lot to take in, I know, but 56 times 1.8 is 100.8 and we can't knit 0.8 of stitch so we'll round it up to 101. So that is the amount of stitches for the front panel and since I'm knitting in the round I'm just times twoing that so we get 202 stitches to cast on for the entire jumper and you will need this to know what measurements you should do for your jumper and your preferred fit. Magic, it's magic. I love knowing this because I can make anything with this knowledge and now I've shared it to you so you can make anything. But yes, I will write all of this down. <laughs> the swatch will also tell us how many rows we need to get the, the, the length of the project that we want. So you do this the exact same way but use the amount of rows instead. I will get back on that once we reach the sleeves in the project because that's where this comes into most use knowing. But yeah, once again, <laughs> I will definitely, definitely write all of this and the formula for calculating this in the description of the video. Don't worry about forgetting, don't worry about writing all of this down now, um, the info is there for you. But yeah, that is how you do magic and calculate anything in knitting and this is why gauge matters. And also always, always, always block your gauge swatch before measuring. That is all. Now I will give you over to Voice Over Show. Now let's actually make the swatch. I will be using a 4.5mm needle and a DK weight yarn. Start by making a slip knot. To cast on, hold your yarn over your fingers like so. Bring your needle under the first strand, over the second, pick up the yarn from your index finger and pull through. Repeat, under the first and over the second, pick up the yarn, pull through and tighten up. Again, under the first strand and over the second, pick up the working yarn, pull through, pick up the yarn, pull through and tighten up. Repeat this for as many stitches as you want to cast on. For this swatch, I cast on a total of 26 stitches. This is what your cast on should look like. Turn your work and we will make our first knit stitches. Insert your right needle through the front loop, back to front, like so. Pick up your yarn and pull it through. Pull the stitch off the left needle. And again, insert your needle through the front loop of your stitch, pick up the yarn 
pull through and off the needle. Insert your needle through the front loop of your stitch, pick up the yarn, pull through and off. Through the front loop of your stitch, pick up the yarn, pull through and off the needle. Repeat this for all stitches. We will use this stitch only for the first three rows, creating what is called a garter stitch fabric. I like to make my first and last couple rows of a swatch in garter stitch because this lays flatter than stockinette, preventing the fabric from curling too much. Now with three rows of garter stitch done, we will begin purling. Begin the row by knitting two to keep the garter stitch going along the edge, then bring the yarn to the front of your work. Take your needle behind your yarn and into the front loop of your stitch front to back, pick up your yarn and pull it through the loop and off the needle. Again, with the yarn in front, go behind the yarn and into the stitch, pick up your yarn, pull it through and off the needle. Go behind the yarn and into the stitch, pick up your working yarn and pull it through and off. Repeat this until the last two stitches. Knit two and turn your work. For the next row, knit all stitches. Repeat the purl row, knit two, purl until your last two stitches, knit two. This is what the fabric should look like on the front of your work. Now we are making stockinette fabric. I am going to show you how to also attach a different colour. Insert your needle into the first stitch as you normally would. Instead of picking up the first colour, make a loop with your new colour, leaving a 10 to 15 cm tail and pull it through. Then simply continue knitting with your new yarn colour. I am weaving in my ends as I go. I will link a tutorial called The Weaving Stephen by Stephen West in the description for a full explanation on how to do this, but basically I wrap my yarn tail around the working yarn between every stitch. I do this for about 12 to 15 stitches. This saves me a lot of time weaving in ends at the end of a project. Repeat your knit and purl rows for your entire gauge swatch until it is at least 10cm tall from where your garter stitch ends. Then make 3 more rows of garter stitch, which is, again, just using knit stitches on both the back and front sides of the work, before we bind off the swatch.
To bind off, knit the first two stitches. Insert your left needle into the first stitch on the right needle. Pull it over the second stitch and off the needle to bind one off. Knit the next stitch. Insert the left needle into the first stitch, pull it over the new stitch and off the needle. Knit the next stitch and again insert the left needle into the first stitch and pull it over the next stitch and off. Repeat these steps for all of your stitches. When you reach your last stitch, cut your yarn leaving a little tail and pull it straight out. This will turn your last stitch into a little knot. And that's the swatch completed. Now let's soak it and block it before measuring how many stitches we got. For soaking, I like to use a gentle wool wash, but this is optional. I have my swatch blocked and measured, I have my maths mathed out and so I am casting on my 202 stitches for the body of the jumper. A handy tip for when you're casting on a lot of stitches is placing a stitch marker every 10 to 20 stitches to keep track of how many you've made. I also place a different marker to mark the beginning of my row. I will be knitting bottom up and so I will be starting with ribbing. I will also be knitting up until the sleeves in the round which just means I am continuously knitting without turning my work. To make ribbing, knit one stitch, then bring a yarn to the front to purl one stitch. Knit one, purl one. Repeat these two stitches all the way around your work. Now I am going to do something optional and special. I prefer a half twisted ribbing. The difference is that instead of going into the front loop of your knit stitches, you go into the back loop. The pearls are worked the same as normal. This twists the knit stitches, which makes for a tighter ribbing and in my opinion a prettier look. But you can definitely keep going with your regular knit one purl one ribbing. Repeat this for all stitches. In total, I did 10 rows of ribbing, but you can make yours as long or short as you feel like. Keep in mind though, a shorter ribbing can have a tendency to flip inside out. See how neat and tidy this looks? I love it! Once I finished my ribbing, I started knitting through the front of the stitches again, and from now on we will be only knitting until the bottom of the sleeves. After one row of my grey, I attached the black yarn and wove in the ends as I went. After two rows of black, I changed to the pink yarn. For this project, I am holding two strands of pink yarn together to match my grey and black yarn. It's a similar yarn, but thinner, and I had a bunch left over from another project. If you're new to knitting, I recommend getting matching yarns for this to avoid any odd stretching or your gauge being different between the colours over time. Let's look at the jumper again to figure out the rose ratio. 
The grey stripes are slightly broader than the black plus pink plus black ones. In my swatch, I tried out two rows of black, six rows of pink, and two more rows of black for a total of 10 rows. So for the grey, I am going to knit 12 rows. This should give me the same amount of stripes with about the same ratio as the original jumper, if I've done my thinking right. So with that, it's onwards with the knitting. With company from the orange boy of course, he has to do his quality control check. A few rows into my second grey stripe is where I decided to split for the sleeves. I figured out this is where I wanted to separate the front and back by measuring how long I wanted the jumper and subtracting the sleeve width. This gave me the measurement for how tall the body needed to be before the sleeves. To do this I am using a long spare cable needle and moving the first 101 stitches after the beginning of round marker onto said spare cable needle. If you don't have a spare cable needle, you can use a tapestry needle and a long piece of yarn to move your stitches onto. Tie your yarn ends together after moving your stitches to keep them secure. Now it's time to knit back and forth using knits on the right side and purling on the wrong side for as tall as I wanted the panel to be. Once I reached where I wanted to start binding off for the shoulders, I marked the first and last stitch with a stitch marker each, and then I started binding off for the shoulders. I wanted the shoulder seams to have a slight slant, so I bound off a total of 20 stitches on each side over 6 rows, binding off the right shoulder on the right side and the left shoulder on the pearl side. The shoulder slant is an optional step, and I wish I had taken better notes when I did it. But alas, my little gremlin brain thought to itself as I did, I will remember what I did between the clips. And friend, I do in fact not remember exactly what I did. But on row one, I bound off two, and then I knit the rest of the stitches. And then on the wrong side, I bound off four stitches before purling the rest of the row. On the right side again, I bound off another 5 stitches.
and then on the wrong side again I bound off another six stitches. One thing I did remember, which is also also an optional step, is I added in some short rows to add to the height of the jumper in the back. I did this after binding off 16 shoulder stitches on each side. At this point my last grey stripe was also taller than 12 rows, which is perfect because that mimics the original jumper. So to add the short rows, I first knit until I was 10 stitches from the end of the row. Then I turned my work, slipped the first stitch back on the right needle with the yarn in front, pulled the working yarn over the needle to give the stitch two loops, which is called a double stitch, and brought the yarn back to the front to continue purling to the last 10 stitches. With 10 stitches left, I once again turn the work, slip the first stitch with yarn in front, wrap my working yarn up and around the needle to create two loops and continue knitting. I knit until I had 10 stitches left to my last double stitch. I repeat what I did before, turn the work and slip the first stitch with yarn in front, wrap the working yarn up and around and continue purling until 10 stitches from the last double stitch. Turn, slip the first stitch with the yarn in front, pull working yarn up and over and continue knitting. Now it is time to work the double stitches. When you reach a double stitch, knit through both loops of the double stitch as one stitch. And again, knit both loops as one stitch. As you can see, this makes a seamless result where you can barely see where you turned your work. Neat and tidy. On the way back, bind off the last four stitches to have a total of 20 stitches bound off, purl until your first double stitch both loops of the double stitch as one stitch. Do the same for the second double stitch. On 
on the right side, bind off all remaining stitches. Okay, so, hello, excuse, excuse the very long fringe, it needs a cut, and excuse the super bright lighting, it's either super dark or super bright right now because the lighting is awful outside, and there is a cat. <laughs> okay, so, in typical, in typical me fashion, in typical shy makes a project vlog fashion, we have ran out of yarn. I repeat, we have ran out of yarn. It's not completely out, but it's not enough to finish. I have this much left of the pink and it looks like more than it is. It is a tiny ball. And I finished the back panel yesterday and I am working through the front panel. I've got one more pink stripe to do on the front panel and if you hear eating sounds in the background, it's my cat eating something he's not supposed to eat. Can you please not eat that? Yeah, I've got one more pink stripe to do on the front panel and then it is the sleeves and I think this will be maybe half a sleeve. I don't know. Um, I've ordered more. It's supposed to arrive tomorrow morning, so keep your fingers crossed it will so we can finish this jumper because I'm really excited for it. I really want to wear it like yesterday. But yeah, um, I am going to get back to knitting through through this ball of yarn. And yeah, I will update you when I have the, the yarn delivery. So for the front panel, we need to make some neck shaping. About seven rows into my last grey stripe is where I decided to start it. And to start, I want to find and mark the middle seven stitches. I'm going to knit all the way to the first marker, bind up those 7 stitches and then continue knitting on the other side of the neck shaping. After this I am going to be knitting the shoulders separately shaping them into a slant, starting on row 12, like we did on the back, by binding off 20 stitches on each side. Same time as I'm binding off the shoulder slant, I will also be binding off a few stitches every other row for the neck shaping. I bind off on the row that starts with the stitches I want to bind off, if that makes sense. So in this case, the shoulder is on the wrong side of the work, and the neck shaping is on the right side of the work. For the other shoulder, it will be the other way around. Once again didn't take too many notes on doing the neck shaping, I'm sorry, but I bound off an additional 4 in my first round and then 2 at a time until I reached 14 rows in height on my last grey stripe. I did the same on both sides of the front panel. I recommend using your gauge calculations to figure out the depth and width of your own jumper's neck shaping. Measure how wide across you want it, multiply that by your stitch count and you will see how many stitches you need to bind off. Thank you. 
Once I had knit my 14 rows, I bound off the remainder of the stitches for the shoulder and attached the yarn on the other side to knit the other shoulder using the same instructions. And with both done and just temporarily clipped together with stitch markers, this is what it looks like. It's looking like a top! Yay! I then flip the top inside out and seam the shoulders together. A note to myself here, and to you maybe, is in retrospect, I feel the slant was unnecessary. If I had kept the shoulder seam straight, I could have grafted the stitches together or done a three needle bind off instead of seaming it for a smoother look. But I'm not mad about it and I still love how it came out. Once I had done the shoulder seams, I started picking up for my sleeves. First, I used my gauge calculations again, multiplying my desired sleeve width with my stitch count to figure out how many stitches I needed to pick up. Then I insert my needle through the stitch on the edge of my panel, wrap the yarn around the needle and pull through to pick up a sleeve stitch. I repeated this for a total of 98 stitches for my sleeves. Now I will pause and tell you about the sleeve maths. My beginning stitch count for the sleeve was 98 stitches, divided over front and back panel, which is 49 stitches per side. I wanted to decrease the sleeves down to 66 stitches for a slight tapered look. 98 minus 66 is 32, which means I need to decrease 32 times. I want to decrease 2 stitches every time I decrease, so I divide 32 by 2 to get 16. This means I need to make 16 decrease rounds in total. Now, how do I know how long to make my sleeves and how many rounds I need between decrease rounds? This is where we look at the row multiplier from the swatch. I had 27 rows over 10 centimeters for my swatch, which means again 27 divided by 10 is 2.7. I wanted my sleeve to be around 46 centimeters long, so I take 46 and multiply this by 2.7, which is 124.2, but we ignore the point 0.2. I need to knit 124 rows to finish the sleeve. Now for the decreases, and this is the last of the numbers, I promise. We divide 124 by 16, which is 7.75, which I am rounding up to 8. So I will be decreasing 2 stitches every 8 rows. We go from 98 stitches to 66 stitches. Alright, let's get back to knitting the sleeves. I'm placing the beginning of round marker again and knitting a few rows of my grey before changing colours. I'm continuing the same ratio of 12 grey rows, 2 black plus 6 pink plus 2 black. I am also marking my decrease rounds with a stitch marker to keep track. I am making my decrease rounds by knitting one, knitting two together, knitting to the last three stitches, making a slip slip knit and knitting the last stitch. If you don't know how to do these decreases, I have linked a tutorial in the description for this as well. One bonus thing I'm doing for the sleeve is I'm slipping the first stitch on every other round. This is to avoid the stripes to be slightly offset, but it does create a visible seam. On my last round of the sleeves, I am knitting two together all the way around to create a bit of a puff sleeve effect. I am then changing to a smaller needle and making 12 rounds of half twisted ribbing for the cuff before binding off. I repeat all of these steps for my second sleeve.
Hello, good morning. I'm on my phone. Uh, Cheddar is saying hello, good morning as well. Yeah. Sorry about my hair. I need to wash it, but I want the coffee first. But this, this is, this is, this is how far I've, I've got it. Um, I will show you. They are doing construction work in the house somewhere, so there's drilling. I wanted to sit and talk, but this is why I'm like on the phone because it's easy. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, they, they are doing construction work, so they are drilling a lot, and it is very, very loud. But yeah, um, what happened is I am out of yarn again. So the yarn is supposed to arrive today, so hopefully that does happen. And yes, wonderful, beautiful orange boy, what is the matter? Okay, okay. Such a cutie, such a cutie. But yeah, um, hopefully that does arrive today. And if it does, I can finish and block and all of that. So yeah, fingers fingers crossed for that. Otherwise, I guess I'll do other things today because I am stuck. <laughs> I can't get further. I have enough pink to get me through half a row. And yeah, that's that's just not fun. So yeah, I'm going to have coffee and then I'm going to do other things until the yarn maybe arrives and then I'm going to knit. And otherwise I'm going to do other things all day until tomorrow when the yarn hopefully arrives instead. Again, now the pear is gone and it's been gone for an hour and it's currently 15 degrees in here, Celsius. It's pretty cold. The only heating we have are radiators, like electric radiators. The, the pair is gone. It's just arrived. So I can finish. I can finish the jumper. Update, not even five minutes later. <laughs> it just came back on. It had been gone for over an hour and it was getting really cold. And yeah, um, it just came back on now. So happy days. The very last step is to pick up and knit the neck ribbing. For this I want the stitch count to be smaller than the amount of stitches around the neck, so I am picking up two and skipping one for most of the neck hole. I pick up every stitch around the bottom of the front, which is eight stitches, and doing the same mid back. I make sure I have an even number of stitches and then I am making 10 rounds of half twisted ribbing again before binding this off. I used a tubular bind off for my neck ribbing, which is a very stretchy bind off, but you can use whichever one you like best, of course. A link to a tutorial for a tubular bind off can be found in the description as well. I would show you myself, but I struggle with this bind off and I think it's better to let someone who is actually good at it show you. Maybe when I am better at it, I can make my own tutorial for you.
With that finished, all I have left to do is weave in the ends that aren't woven in while knitting, removing all of the stitch markers, and then it's puffing time and we are done! <laughs> forehead jump scare I haven't had my fringe back in ages but oh my goodness we we did it I'm so excited it turned out exactly how I wanted it is so cute it is cropped it is wide it has poofy sleeves it is hang on And the sleeves are long so I can pull them over my hands and I'm so 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 excited about it. A note to myself and to you if you were gonna do this as well is uh, I didn't stretch it in blocking because while wet the um, the fabric it felt super super loose so I was a bit scared it was gonna be way too big and I just left it to dry <laughs> flat mind you uh, always dry and it's flat but obviously it's still a lot looser than pre-blocking and it is actually perfect <laughs> I'm missing about five centimeters two inches of width in the body the sleeves are fine and I think that is because this is knit flat and these are knit in the round these I say and touch the body of the project but still um, <laughs> These sleeves are knit in the round as you've seen and gauge can differ a little bit from flat to in the round. I don't know, but um, it doesn't matter. I don't mind at all. It's still roomy enough for me to be happy and yeah, it will probably still stretch a little in wearing as well. So there's that but yeah I am so happy all in all I'm so so happy it is so cozy it is so cute I've been so happy while making this because it's just turning out so adorable these I don't know what it is about these stripes but I just love it so much I'm gonna be wearing the heck out of this so if you followed it if you like this as well and if you decide to follow along with my loose guidelines on how to make this please 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 tag me on Instagram or on TikTok you can find both of them in the description of the video so you can find me and obviously tag me or send me a DM. Uh, I would love to see if you make this or if, if you make it in any of the colours or whatever. If you use this as a guide on how to make a jumper please tag me I would love to see. But yeah this has been so much fun I am so happy I did this. I have more projects like it planned which is also exciting I have a growing Pinterest board which is secret so you can't find it but um, I have I have more planned but if you have any other like knitting or crochet projects like a fast fashion jumper or purse or from a game or something, whatever. Tell me down below in a comment and give me what you would like to see. If you have something you would like, you see this video and you're like, oh my God, I would like to see that. Uh, let me know and I will see what I can do about it because th this has been super fun. I want to make more. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, yeah. And with that, I will let you go and enjoy the rest of your day and the rest of your knit if you cast this on, which I think you should because it is the perfect crop. I love it. I am so happy. But anyway, thank you all so, so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new here and you would like to stick around to see what else I make on the channel in the future, please consider hitting the subscribe button down below and also leave the video a little like if you liked it and yeah stay safe make stuff you love and i will see you again very very soon bye